I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel from The Bunker and for the first time ever since I moved into The Bunker I've decided to take you all on a tour. This is not a decision I have reached lightly because The Bunker is very much a work in progress. I'm constantly tweaking it and trying to improve it. So it was a case of deciding when would be the best time to effectively declare it more or less finished, which I suppose it is. There are one or two niggles here and there, but mostly it's the finished article. So where to begin? Um, as you can probably tell, I mean, the camera always makes it look bigger, but it's not a very big space. It probably looks bigger on camera than it is in real life. But this is a former basement. It's just slightly below ground level. So you can see here there are steps going up to where the ground level is outside. I made sure when we were choosing the door that we got frosted glass. That's to allow the light in while at the same time, how can I put this? <laughs> Limiting the possibility of my believing Jehovah's Witness relatives getting upset or offended by what's going on in here and also obviously limiting the possibility of my videos getting interrupted if I happen to be filming in this direction as I sometimes do. This is the collection of Watchtower materials. I'll show you that a bit more later and this is Kevin's Corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you've watched the Bunker videos from the 2016 Remain Loyal to Jehovah convention, you'll understand who Kevin is and what he represents. Kevin is like the rebellious Jehovah's Witness who doesn't fancy doing cart witnessing right outside his place of employment. And because he isn't so enthusiastic about his religion. He doesn't make the grade when the Great Tribulation comes. He gets presumably destroyed along with all the unbelievers at Armageddon. So this is Kevin's corner and all of these names around Kevin's picture are the names of just some of the hundreds of patrons I have who make my work possible, including the bunker, all of the equipment, the many hours that I put into my videos is really all made possible because of my Patreon supporters. So these are just a few of the names from the Rome Plus level and they're there on the bunker wall. They also appear on the end credits of my videos. Just a little bit of boring technical information for you. You'll see here I have a dehumidifier. This keeps the humidity levels in the bunker constantly below 60%. If not for the dehumidifier, the bunker's humidity would be around 80%, especially in the summer months, which is not good news for old books. So a viewer of the channel very kindly drove all the way from another European country. I'm being careful to protect his identity. He drove all the way to my home in Croatia and installed a dehumidifier. And he also installed this air conditioning system, which comes in extremely useful, both during the summer and winter months. So in the summer, it keeps me nice and cool. And in the winter, it provides me with a bit of warmth. Too much warmth, actually, today, because I'm sweating a bit. So you'll also notice that I have my own tribute to Christopher Hitchens. This is a display that was very kindly donated by a viewer to the channel. And since I had this picture, I thought it would be nice to arrange for this quote to be put also on a display, And that's my favourite Hitchens quote. Never be a spectator of unfairness or stupidity. 
Seek out argument and disputation for their own sake. The grave will supply plenty of time for silence. So it's nice to have those words constantly in front of me on a daily basis, reminding me of why it is that I do the work I do. So in the corner here, you'll have noticed on recent rebuttals, I have a small collection of some of the more colourful items of Watchtower literature. I also have an actual JW.org sign that they put on Kingdom Halls. This was very kindly donated by a viewer who I met in Texas. So all the way from America, don't ask me how he got it, but I just have to assume it's all above board. <laughs> anyway, so that's a permanent addition to the bunker. You'll see there also the Caleb DVD, listening to the great teacher. I've also framed some tracts. That's one of the oldest tracts in my collection, going back to, I think, the 1950s. And you have the Will This World Survive? Down on the bottom, you have the Be Courageous program, the creation book and the Jehovah's Witnesses DVD. So just a few colorful items there that I can display. What else can I show you? I'd like to show you my desk, which is where I suppose it's my favorite part of the bunker for filming purely because it's the most comfortable. So I can now switch to <laughs> this camera what I want to do is show you a little bit about my setup. So right now I am using the ambient lighting, but I have it set up so that my light can come on with a flick of a few switches on this remote. So you'll notice hopefully the difference when I turn the lights on. There's one light. Those are the background lights. And that puts a bright kind of light forward onto my face. So that has been um, a big improvement because previously I'd have to scamp around <laughs> pressing all sorts of buttons on the backs of lights. And then I thought, I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this. And that's made things significantly better. Now, the other obvious issue that I have at this stage is sound. So the sound that you're hearing now is being picked up by my DJI Osmo Action. You'll notice that it's a bit echoey. When you're making videos for YouTube, ideally you want to limit as much as possible the amount of echo. That's why we have the SM7B and when I switch on the recorder, hopefully you'll notice the difference. So this is with the SM7B switched on and hopefully you'll immediately notice the difference between the tiny little microphone on the Osmo and the Shure SM7B. And this is a major reason why I prefer to record videos at my desk because I don't have to worry so much about the sound quality and I also have a nice comfy chair and I also have my lights set up exactly how I want them. So yeah, this is my preferred recording setup. However, I do try as much as possible to switch things up a bit now and then and try to record from different angles because the beauty of having your own dedicated space is that you can experiment and you can show viewers different parts so that they're not seeing the same thing each and every time they click on one of your videos. So yeah, quite happy with how I've got things set up, but we will now switch back to the audio from the Osmo Action so that I don't have to edit an entire video <laughs> with this even though I'm going to be walking around. So let me show you the display behind me. So you have here Luke Skywalker, 
generously donated to the channel by Covert Fade. <laughs> this is a little toy, me I guess, <laughs> clutching a pillow. Uh, this also was donated by a viewer. And we have here the Enterprise, just a nice memento from the happier times from my childhood. You also have here Mike Rinder, Bobblehead. I've obviously had the enormous pleasure of working with Mike on the Aftermath special along with Leah Remini. Speaking of Leah Remini, I have her book here, Troublemaker. And if I just put this down, you'll see that I managed to get her to <laughs> sign it while I was on one of my trips to LA. So that's a prized possession in my collection of books. I also have here the Telly Award. If you don't know what this Telly Award is for and the backstory behind it, I guess just type in Cedar's Telly Award to YouTube and you'll get the full story of how that came about. You have the Bunker Trooper here, standing guard, making sure that there's no unnecessary cult antics, no intrusions of a cultish kind to the bunker. You have Gary Bro here, <laughs> famous for the Pillowgate videos. I'd rather not say what these are, but <laughs> I was given these on a trip to Australia. And yes, just a selection of books, a mix really of official Watchtower books. You also have their Crisis of Conscience, and you have The Reluctant Apostate, and just a selection really of atheist books and certain memoirs that I find to be extremely inspirational. So this, in case you're interested, is where I mount my Osmo action when I'm doing bunker interviews. You then have this part of the bunker where again I have some books that are written predominantly by ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. You, you have there a mirror and that's angled so that I can see myself and check my hair. Yes, I do occasionally check my grooming when I'm doing videos as I'm increasingly finding I need to do. You have C-3PO there just watching over proceedings. And here you have you have my Zoom recorder, which I use for capturing the audio from my SM7B. And when I'm doing live streams, I need to use this. This is my audio box. So just for those of you who are interested in the technical side of how the bunker works. Now, shelves. The less said about these shelves, the better. <laughs> this is really where I keep most of my leftover items, my duplicates from my Watchtower collection. Although you'll see I also have um, a number of spare copies of The Reluctant Apostate, just in case I'm doing an event somewhere, I can pack those up and take those with me. I also have an array of different, I guess you could say miscellaneous <laughs> books that are about the Bible or which don't necessarily fit in with the rest of my books or the rest of my collection. You have here, I will eventually be getting this framed, but this is my MTS certificate, laminated and signed there, declaring me to be a representative, no less, of the International Bible Students Association and its associate corporation, Watchtower Bible and Track Society of Britain. Now you'll see that the lights have come on for my collection and that all happened when I was pressing those buttons before. So the buttons also activate the lighting in my bookshelves. On the top shelf, you'll see the books are dedicated to the era of Charles Taze Russell. So you have there, um, early copies of, that's actually the only copy that I have of Studies in the Scriptures from when it was called Millennial Dawn. I think that copy is dated to 1901 or 1902. And then they obviously changed the name to Studies in the Scriptures because they figured that Millennial Dawn 
sounded a bit too much like a novel. <laughs> so they changed it to Studies in the Scriptures. And this series here is what's known as the Silver Lamp series because they changed the look of Studies in the Scriptures, as we're going to see. But also on the Charles Taze Russell shelf, you have the Daily Heavenly Manor. Uh, that's actually the only copy I've got, but there are bigger, far more impressive copies to be had. I'm hoping to get my hands on one eventually. You have there the photodrama of creation in book form. And you have what Pastor Russell said. Now, technically, this is not a Watchtower publication. This is a Bible student publication. But it's dated to, I think, literally just after Pastor Russell died. So it's probably one of the very earliest examples of apostate or non-Watchtower approved <laughs> materials. You then have the, I guess I call this the Rutherford Shelf, but the finished mystery, of course, wasn't written by Rutherford. It was commissioned by him. And you'll see here the difference between what's called the winged disc editions of Studies in the Scriptures and the silver lamp uh, editions. So just a different look entirely when they moved into this era so this is my prized possession, my copy of The Finished Mystery. It's a 1917 original. I've used it already quite a number of times in my videos. Obviously, you also have Millions Now Living Will Never Die, The Harp of God, The Way to Paradise, and Deliverance, which I believe is from 1926. If you open slightly, the doors, you'll see that I have lots more editions of studies in the scriptures, but I keep them as much as possible protected behind glass. And again, some early books from sort of the 1920s. So, and then you have here a shelf, a display shelf where I have, I guess you could say this is a damaged. Uh, bound volume. This is the first bound volume, I think dated to 1920, where they went all the way back to the earliest or the first uh, issue of Zion's Watchtower. I have a copy of this that's in much better condition, but I keep that kind of stowed away somewhere so it doesn't get damaged. And I use this purely for display purposes. This is an original watchtower dated to 1928. I have another issue there from 1950. And this is one of my small number of records, a Rutherford record titled Fathers. Now, at some point, I'm really hoping that I can do a video rebutting Rutherford based on his records that I have. I just need to, I guess, buy a record player and figure out how I'm going to go about doing that. But yeah, I do have a small number of records that, again, were very kindly donated to me by a viewer. In fact, I would say 80, 80 to 90 percent of the collection that you're looking at has been donated by subscribers and viewers and readers of JW Survey down through the years. It's an ongoing project, so I do still have a number of items. It may look like I've got everything. <laughs> I would say I've probably got 70% roughly of what you could possibly have of Watchtower materials that have ever been printed. So there's still lots to get, and I do actually keep an online inventory of my collection so that when people approach me and say, oh, I've got some old books, and when I say old, I mean like 19, 1930s and earlier, I send them the link and they can check in their own collection to see if there's anything that they are able to send. But no, it's... Uh, it's my pride and joy. It's strange because even though it's mostly all nonsense, 
it's nonsense that I can hopefully use to try to help wake people up. And you'll see that the books progress from the 1930s through to the 1940s, the 1940s through to the early 1960s. There's the, what do you call it? The fat boy, I think they called this. <laughs> One of the earliest New World translations. The mid 1960s through to the 1980s, the early 1980s through to 2010. And on this shelf, you just have 2011 through to more or less now. These are obviously larger books that don't fit with the other small books. And these folders are where I keep all of the things that don't easily, how can I put this? All of the things that don't easily fit on my shelves. So let me put that camera down. This by the way is my second microphone for when I'm interviewing people and doing bunker interviews. So yeah, I've got it all set up how I want it. So this folder is for tracts and I have quite an extensive collection of different tracts from different years. And the white folder is for Kingdom News. So you can see there some of the older Kingdom News going through to some of the, <laughs> are we nearing Armageddon? Well, we must be, mustn't we? <laughs> so yeah, so this is where I keep basically all of the stuff that doesn't neatly sit on my bookshelves. And that is pretty much it. Did I mention that this is a bed settee or a sofa bed? And every now and then I just come and have a quick lie down on here, have a little nap, and then get back to my editing refreshed. But this also folds out into a full bed so that if we have guests, they have somewhere to sleep. They can sleep in the bunker experience. You also have, I, probably I should have mentioned this right from the beginning, you have the apostasy poster. Daniel Cocatilo's masterpiece is staring down at me every day when I'm working at my desk. He also gave me very kindly a DVD of his film. You've got their Crisis of Conscience and Leaving the Witness. So. I'm surrounded by reminders of the work that I'm doing and I guess it's just a very relaxing, quiet space to work. Before this, I was obviously filming videos in my house and when you have kids, um, it's very, very difficult to plan your work around children. There were times when I'd be filming and I'd have to literally convince my daughter to spend a while in her room being quiet with her mum beside her so that I could get a video filmed. And I'm still not entirely sure <laughs> how we managed all that. But it got to the point where we had Julia on the way and it was just like, well, we're already struggling with one child, what's it going to be like with two? And it was around that time that I started reaching out to my patrons and said, look, you know, there's this opportunity to build a bunker, to build a dedicated studio where I can do filming. And so the money was made available. Well, it was already being made available really through what was being contributed over Patreon. And I have to say that it was extremely kind and generous of Diana's parents, who are JWs, let's not forget, to just be reasonable and say, look, we, we recognise that you're a growing family, have a bit more space, and we don't want to know what goes on down there, basically, was their attitude. So yes, this is The Bunker. 
I hope you have enjoyed this video. <laughs> look at that shot there, crouching down in the corner. I look like a right weirdo. Uh, <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more videos. And as always, thank you for watching.